Hey guys, it's Snap here with another Raid Shadow Legends video. Now, a day late getting this video out just because I've had a very hectic Friday. So, uh, sorry for everyone who normally expects these on the day of these events coming out. But it is a summoning event, so it's not hopefully too late. I do like to try and get these out as soon as I possibly can. However, we have ourselves a Hero's Path. Uh, it's the only event that's going on right now because pretty much we're in this waiting space it's a bit of a weird one they've announced that we're getting these uh this new uh, asgard rising or asgard divided event that is coming new login champions but we've kind of got the information a week early it's not starting till tuesday which means we're kind of in this weird period now where it's almost like hey the the fusion's ended so we have to have some sort of you know soul fusion event because that's what we normally get these days we get an event or we get a titan event and that gives us the hero soul for the fusion we've just done so we still need to do that but if you're like me you're sitting here thinking but if i summon on this event i could be sacrificing the chance for me to get one of the asgardians and we only really know loki so far we know the names of the other heroes but we don't really know any of the champions sort of what they're going to do and we're probably certain that at least one of them are going to be really good. If we think back to the Monster Hunter event, everyone wanted the Nergigante Archer. So I'm a bit on this weird place where it's like, well, you know, I did the Scored Fusion. Not many of you probably did. And I kind of would like the soul, but I really don't think I want it that badly that I would sacrifice the chance of the upcoming event. So I think Playroom kind of made a bit of a mistake announcing the Asgardians so soon. I feel like they should have probably held back and waited for the end of the event just because it, I feel like they've killed the hype for this. That being said, on the positive side, no one is going to get sort of messed up by summoning right now and then going, oh, I wish I'd saved my shards for the Asgardian event that's coming. So there is a positive for us. It's a negative for Plerium, I would say. But we're here to talk about the Hero's Path. There is a progressive summon event going on right now. And I will say that the Warmaster Authorian is a very good pickup. For anyone who wants to compete in hydra i have continuous problems with block buffs and he is a bit of a block buff solution uh, and he is enemy max hp as well super good if you put him in slayer set so absolutely a great pickup um, as are some of the other ones candrophon still pretty good although he's been outshadowed by harimo and other force based nukas that are, that are in the game right now uh, and in terms of voids we have a Krizia and valkanen but again it's all about the summons. Now, they have done something different with this for Hero's Path. They have decided to double the points of Primal Shards. I will tell you that is because it is a big bait. We have not had a times 2 Primal in a while. Do not summon your Primal Shards. That is absolutely designed to make you use your Primal Shards ahead of a times 2 that we're likely going to get. So, absolutely save your Primal Shards. Do not use those here, even though the math is probably going to prove that they're quite good. So let's have a quick look at the hero's path. We've got two left and right-handed paths. The points are the same whichever side you go down. However, the soul or the stone is the decision. If you want the soul, you go the left-hand side path so you don't have to spend all these extra points. If you want the eternal soul stone, you go the right-hand path. Now there is th five event keys, essentially, five event keys available. You only need one if you want one of those two reports. If you want the soul or the stone, you only need one. So you can absolutely just go down the middle here pick up the chaos dust which is quite valuable and the one key and that will unlock everything you need to get the stone it will also unlock what you need to get a legendary book so when we look at the hero's path we will probably look at how much does it cost to get the, the soul the eternal stone a legendary book or a mythical tome those are kind of like i think the four things you might seek on this path pretty straightforward the other aspect is obviously dungeon divers nothing else has changed in terms of points there now i do this for every single hero's path i create a spreadsheet i link the spreadsheet in the pinned comment so if you want to get this and use this to see how it works for you you absolutely can do if you're going for this event and i pull out all the different rewards and i generally structure this then around paths that i think a player who's playing this game will want to go for so at the scored soul here we've got the eternal soul we've got the legendary book and the mythical book so the entire path is about two hundred thousand points to get the soul, you need about half of it, 89,800. To get the Eternal Soul Stone, it's about 10,000 cheaper. To get the Legendary Book, it's about 27,800. And the Mythical Book is 49,300. It is on the pricey side. I will say that this is more expensive to get all of these different things. We always have a path to a Legendary Book. It's normally about 22 to 25. This is 27. It's on the high end. Now, with every hero's path, there's always a primary way that they want you to do this. They will either want you to do it via the, the primary method 
and then the secondary method will support it or they want you to do the other method. Like it's very rare that I ever have like equal methods. The only time I've ever seen it happen is when they did one artifact enhancement in the champion training, I think once back in back in the day, but they always pair one weak with one strong. And in this one, it is summoning. You need to summon shards if you have any hope of doing this soul chase, right? You just cannot farm enough dungeons in the time unless you're an absolute kraken. And if, if that's the case, you might as well buy shards. Now we do see the impact of primal shards here, but again, it's not huge. They're basically giving you about 900 more points. So it's going to save you around about 17 primal shards should you use them. Again, I would recommend you don't use primal shards. It's a bait. They want you to summon them because the times two primals is coming up. We haven't had one for a while. It's definitely on the agenda. Now, in terms of the overall shards, you're not going to use mysteries like 30,000. That is just horrific. It's about 20 sacreds. I will say that's a lot for a five-star champion soul for a champion that literally is kind of like an AoE nuka with Hydra and not an AoE arena nuka, an AoE wave clear in Hydra. And that, that's about it. He doesn't do anything else. It's a lot to ask for, for that type of champion. Uh, so I would say it, even, if I've, even if you've got it, I don't think this is worth it because I think the Asgardians are going to be stronger because it's a special event, they're going to be more interesting. You're going to want your shards for those events. One of them will be a fusion. One of them will be a login champion. One will be exclusively tied to some sort of summoning event. I wouldn't be surprised if we have like a guaranteed void event or something of that nature as well. The Monster Hunter, there was five. So we might see less events because there's only four. Then again, they might throw a sneaky fifth one in towards the end. We don't really know. But for sure, one will be a fusion, one's the login champion, one will be tied behind guaranteed summoning of some sort, like a shard event or something of that nature. So save your shards for the Asgardians. This is too expensive. Um, even for legendary books, six legendary books. I mean, it's comparable to a summon rush, but you're really going to be making a decision on whether or not you really want those times 15. And I don't think they're that, that exciting either. Now, in terms of the dungeon divers, just quickly how we do this, we map out the individual points you get for each type of artifact. We then put this into the probabilities for each stage. We then divide that with those points to give us on average, how many points do you get what per run? Obviously you don't get one point per mythical, but if we would add it all up, it gives us whenever we're running a dungeon, the average points we get per run, which then allows us to generate the average per energy. And what you will find is the higher stage gives you more points per run, but the additional energy means that it's more efficient to run stage 20, which is what you should always do with these types of events if you want points. Now, what we can do is we can bring this together into a calculator. I always have one of these so you can offset it because what you're going to want to do with dungeon divers is consider how much energy you need to offset what you're going to do with summoning. Because I'll be honest, if you just want to do it with dungeon divers, you're looking at 50,000 energy, probably 45,000 if you're efficient on stage 20. It is a lot. Even the legendary book is 14,000 energy. It is too much it's basically nearly double a dungeon divers. It's just not worth it. Uh, obviously, if you were to use some sacreds, however, then these numbers will come down, right? Even if you use five sacreds, you still need 34,000, which is why I'm saying I just don't think it's worth it. I will make this spreadsheet available in the, in the description and in the pinned comments. So if you are going for it, you can use this to see how much you will need. Like, for example, if you said I summon 10 primals because you're crazy, five sacreds and 10 voids and then 20 ancients, well, you'll get 63,000. You still need 14,000 energy to get there, right? You can use this offset to pick what you want. Obviously, if you want a legendary book, you're done. That's not a problem. If you want the mythical book, you are done as well. That's all you would need. But if you want the soul, you're going to need more. You're going to need more points. And you can see it is going to be between primals and sacreds more than anything else. Voids are, are not too bad, but since primals have come in, they've kind of overtaken void. So you can use the spreadsheet to basically figure it out. So there you go, guys. That is the hero's path. I am going to be skipping it personally. I think I would, if it was me, I would want to see what the other guardians are going to be. And I don't think the soul's strong, right? There's never a question of is it the soul worth it? The soul would always be worth it. I just don't think the context is worth it. I, if we didn't have a special event coming up, I'd be more interested. But the Asgardians, I know, are going to be stronger. I think it would just be a very poor decision to waste shards right now. Not so much waste, but summon shards right now. Especially considering, I would say, this isn't exactly the craziest progressive event we've ever had. There are better progressive events we've had. These are great champions. Like, yes, Akrizia is good, but let's be honest... 
with Teox and Garol and Toshiro and all these other champions that can just scale, she's starting to not be the number one Hydra Queen. She's still good. She's still in there as a top damage dealer, but she's no longer the, oh my God, she's the best in the game anymore. She's lost that crown. So I don't think it's worth summoning. I personally wouldn't summon, but the, the tools are there if you want to do it. And that's the kind of math you're going to need. So yeah, let me know guys in the comments below. Uh, are you going for this event? W were you going for it before that? Has the Asgardian event influenced your decision to go for this scored event? Because I do think personally, for me, it had has influenced it because I was interested. The moment they announced Asgardian, I was less interested altogether. Let me know in the comments below, guys, and I'll catch you in the next video.